Hello my wolf pack and welcome back to another episode, the actual last uh, episode of the main season of the RBL Team Builders. So, yeah, this is crazy. Um, RBL Week 11. 11 week season. Uh, I didn't know it was 11 weeks when I signed up, but yeah. Sorry, just getting comfy. Uh, this team is actually, on the front of things, really, really, really scary. But when I actually look at it and when I look at my team matchups... I'm not that scared, honestly. Um, I've got a lot of months to kind of deal with things and kind of cope with a lot of things, so I'm hoping that hopefully we are definitely going to see some, some win here. I'm just going to change this up. There we go, that makes me look more normal. So we've got uh, Matt Flame, uh, is who we're versing this week, with the, oh, I can't remember what they're called, um, the LA Lakers, I want to say they are. I think, um, I could be wrong there, but I think it's the LA Lakers. Um, and we are battling them this week. Go check out Matt's stuff. He's a really fantastic guy. Um, does lots of lots of really cool stuff uh, on his Twitch. I haven't checked out YouTube recently, but YouTube as well. I believe he does have links down in the description, so go check those out. For his team, GMAX Cinderace, uh, which is potentially a problem, but also potentially not a problem. It does have the ability to have um, Libero or Libero, however you say it, which could be a problem, but... Um, it depends on lots and lots of different things. Uh, Tapu Lele, which is um, a really frustrating one. If it's Scarfed, it could definitely cause some problems for me. Um, with Sizzle, yeah, again, like it can potentially cause some problems, especially if it gets set up. Um, Electivire, which, you know, my team's not too scared of, honestly. Uh, Mandibuzz, potentially a little bit, but not hugely scared here. Roton Frost, which could actually be a little bit of a problem because I have got Dragon types. Um, it doesn't get freeze dry though, so Dracovish is relatively fine. Mandibuzz could have a problem, and Dragalge could have a problem here. Also with Hippaldon, but uh, we know Hippaldon just just lives, <laughs> just lives things. Um, it may not live um, like Blizzard, but you know it, it can do some stuff. Appleton, which you know, I haven't really like overly planned for here. I've got some moves for it, but realistically, like it's a dragon fire, so it's dragon fire type, dragon grass type, uh, and. Yeah, I've got Dragalge that kind of hits it hard. Um, I guess I have got a Grass Weakness in Hippaldon, but um, and a, a Dragon Weakness in Dracovish, but, you know, I can't necessarily see this coming, um, honestly. We've got Lickitung, which, again, I don't really see coming, but I have got the ability to kind of deal with it. Uh, Rhyperia, I probably do see come, because it is a really good counter in uh, any kind of Trick Room scenarios, but Rhyperia does put a threat on my team. Um, it hits two mons super effectively, and uh, can just hit like a trap, honestly, <laughs> it can just hit like a trap. Uh, Galarian Moltres, which again is really frustrating, like funnily enough, this week I'm versing two Galarian Moltres um, teams, so <laughs> Galarian Moltres could potentially be a problem for me, obviously I've got Stab Electric with Draco Zolt here, uh, I've not got any Stab Ice type attacks, or any Stab Rock type attacks, but I have got some coverage. Uh, and then Combustion, I probably don't see Combustion, Combustion coming. But, you know, it could be a potential. Um, it'd be weird to come because I don't think it really matches up with my team very well. So, my team. Hippaldon, we have Sandstream with. Um, obviously allowing us to get up sand, a little bit of chip damage. Uh, really helpful for anything that's sashed. Got leftovers, allowing us to heal up a little bit. And then we've got Earthquake. Powerful ground type attack. And hits the Cinderace. Um, it hits the Electivire. It hits the... Uh, Rhyperia, it hits the Lickitung relatively hard, it hits the Combuscan, um, yeah, it hits the, the, the Lele pretty hard as well, because Lele doesn't have huge defense stat. We've got Fire Fang for the Scizor, because honestly, um, obviously Scizor is not going to want to have to deal with Fire Fang. Uh, I don't see any way of setting up the rain with this team, uh, currently, unless, like, Lickitung gets Rain Dance or something, uh, but I don't see an easy way of setting up rain here, so that is... Uh, a potential problem, well not a potential problem, it's, it's, a, it's actually a good thing because we don't have to worry too much about it. We've got Rock Slide here that just gives, gives a bit more coverage as well, Galarian Moltres specifically because I did need something for it. And then we've got Protect allowing us to uh, protect on turn 1 Trick Room if we go for that um, or just uh, protecting for reducing damage. Excuse me, right, so we have got several different things we can do with this. We can Dynamax, Hippaldon. Uh, we can then use Max Quake to increase up our special defense, especially if it's like a Choice Scarf, uh, not Choice Scarf, Choice Specs Lele. Choice Scarf Lele, as I said, is a problem. Uh, but I just went for my Max Attacking. Uh, I did consider putting Body Press on here, but you know what, I thought, 
we can we can hit things hard without that. Like we've got the the rock slide, which also hits Rotom Frost for super effective damage. So yeah, this isn't too bad. Um, so I think Hippowdon could potentially put in a lot of work. We've got Dragalgy next. Now Dragalgy is going to be fun here. Um, it hits the team relatively hard. I've got Sludge Wave, which hits the Lele quite nicely. Obviously, I do have to get a Trick Room out for the Lele because that thing's outspeeding me every day of the week. <laughs> uh, we've got um, obviously a Resist on Electric type. Rotom Frost is going to potentially be a problem, but at the same time, Sludge Wave is going to hit it really hard. We've got Appleton. Sludge Wave hits it really hard. Lickitung, again, Sludge Wave hits it hard. Surf for the Rhyperia because four times weak to it. It'll probably go down to if it has a sash. If not, it'll go down. Uh, Galarian Moltres, I put Thunderbolt on here, but again, Sludge Wave is a really good choice for it. Same with Combuscan. And yeah, basically, this team does not look like this team doesn't really like Dragalgy too much. Uh, Trick Room Dragalgy is probably where it's going to be, but definitely uh, if I get a Tailwind Dragalgy as well, that could definitely be putting in a lot of work um, just because it will outspeed the vast majority of Pokemon. Um, obviously, I've not got any speed investment, so. Uh, Trick Room could definitely be better, but then Rhyperia does potentially become a problem. I could definitely Dynamax. Dynamaxing could definitely be a really good option. Obviously, Lele is going to hit me really hard with Psychic, but at the same time, I have a really big special defense stat. So if I Dynamax, um, I don't really have too much to worry about. And Max Ooze combined with um, either Mandibuzz or Porygon could be really, really huge for me uh, in this matchup. So moving on to Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is very defensive this week. I've got no special attack investment, but I have got download. Um, here I've got a lot of defense investment because there is a lot of physical pressure on this team um, and I didn't really have anything especially defensive to cope with it but I thought I'd go for the rest of the special defense investment and basically they're balanced out so yeah <laughs> we've got Eviolite as always download um, as always as well because I like running it try attack because it hits everything except the sizzle for neutral damage there's no uh, ghost type here so the, oh, it's also the right area as well doesn't get doesn't like it well, does fine with it um, but Thunderbolt to hit the Sizzle because I didn't really have anything else to do with it. And then Ice Beam just covers a few more Mons on the team and it hits Rhyperior for super effective damage too. So that's kind of my thought there. We've got Trick Room to set this up for Hippowdon and Dragalgy um, to work really hard there. Yeah, that's all I've got to say about Porygon because it just does what it does every week. Sets up Trick Room, gets a download boost potentially, possibly more boost from Dragalgy with the uh, Sludge Wave or the Max Ooze, sorry. And then just wins the game. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily win, but obviously like if I got like a plus two or even plus three Porygon two, um, that could definitely put in a lot of work and to definitely cause a lot of problems for the opposing team. 100% um, here. Obviously Ice Beam hits Appleton for four times effective damage as well, so that's really, really nice. Moving on to our next special Pokemon. I have decided to run this as special this week. We have got um, our Mandibuzz. Now Mandibuzz has got a Wakan Berry, obviously two electric types. I'm not going to risk that, although Ice type is definitely a possibility. Rock types, because we are hugely defensive, it doesn't really matter too much, so we can, can live hits there. Obviously the Fairy type Moonblast attack from Tapu Lele is a big problem, but I do have a lot of um, investment in HP and, and a fair amount of special defense investment, so I should be able to live one hit, assuming it's not Specs. And um, it could potentially be Specs to deal with my Mandibuzz, because honestly Mandibuzz is... Uh, a big threat when it can set up a Tailwind, so that's, that's the only way to set up a Tailwind and causes my team, like Drago Vish, to become really, really powerful. Heat Wave, that hits the Scissor, that was kind of my main main thought of hitting Scissor, but it also hits the Rotom Frost, it hits the Apple Tump for neutral, um, but yeah, it hits some of them relatively nicely. We've got Snarl, which also hits things like Tapu Lele to reduce its special attack by one stage. Um, we've got the Galarian Moltres, in the worst case scenario, I can reduce its special attack by one stage. Um, and even Rotom Frost, if I'm worried about it, could definitely do that as well. So Snarl is more of a strategic move here than a uh, like actual attacking move. But at the same time, it's boosted by Stab, so you know it can do damage. Fake Tears as well, because that combines really nicely with the Porygon 2 and the Dragalgy. So I thought that that creates a nice synergy uh, trio there, which allows for them to work really nicely off of each other. Um, and just really kind of cause some damage. Next up, we have got our uh, Arcanine. Now, Arcanine is a wonderful, wonderful Pokemon. Um, it's done so much for us in the league, and it's doing the same thing as it's always doing this, this week as well. We've got Expert Belt with Intimidate. Intimidate for the Cinderace, and the Scizor, and the Electivire, and the Lickitung, and the Rhyperia. Lots and lots of reasons why I've got the Arcanine um, Intimidate here. 
definitely a possible Dynamax Pokemon to get my Max Knuckles up, especially if it's alongside like Dracovish, um, or even Hippowdon getting the, the attack boost there would definitely be really, really nice for me. We've got Flare Blitz, which covers a lot of the team for neutral damage, if not super effective damage. And then I went for Play Rough to hit the Galarian Moltres, so honestly I think um, that Galarian Moltres, if it lays set up like Nasty Plots and stuff, it is going to be a problem for me. Um, there's no access to Rage Powder on this team as far as I'm aware, um, or any like... Uh, moves that cause my, my gaze to change on them, so I think it should be relatively okay. And we've got Protect here because, you know, Protect is just a handy move to have. Definitely, as I said, Dynamax option. Expert Belt just gives me a little bit more damage output. Um, Ockerberry Scizor is definitely a possibility here. Um, I honestly would not be shocked if I saw an Ockerberry Scizor um, because I have got Arcanine, and Arcanine is a big threat against it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't re Scissor at all, but it does really wall out. Well, it doesn't wall out Creamy hugely because I could always run the Berry Berry and go for Mystical Fire and that would just completely like obliterate the sizzle. We saw that in the TBL Season 6. <sighs> right, just having a nice little sip of drink there because I'm very parched. I've also got a really bad headache. <laughs> but yeah, so Arcanine is going to be uh, putting in some work this week as well. And then moving on to our final one now, I will tell you, Dracovish, according to my calculations, if I can get under a Tailwind, it completely destroys. And the fact that if the Tapu Lele comes, it sets up Psychic Terrain, that Psychic Terrain causes there to be no priority attacks. I'm not running a single priority attack. But obviously Dracovish can then tear up the house under a, a um, Tailwind. Because honestly, it one hit KOs a G-Max Cinderace. Like, comfortably, at this point. And I'm just like, wow, that is incredible. The one thing I do have to be concerned about is a Choice Scarf Tabu Lele. But I thought a Choice Scarf Tabu Lele, um, I will just have to find another way to deal with that. I'll have to uh, potentially lose first match, come in the second match, and bring Porygon and just uh, do some antics with that. Electivire is, we've got Earthquake, uh, but I think Fish's Rent also takes it out. Rotom Wash, uh, Fish's Rend again. Appleton, don't get Fish's Rend here, but I've got Ice Fang, that's going to be boosted by the Strong Jaw, so it's going to hit really hard, and that, that's going to go down. Lickitung, I think, potentially goes down to a Fish's Rend. Rhyperior 100% does. Galarian Moltres 100% does as well, as long as it's not Dynamax. If it's Dynamax, then uh, it's definitely at least a 2-hit KO. And then Combustion also will go down. So Fish's Rend with Dracovish here is just really, really, really powerful. And uh, honestly, it's probably going to be my main, my main lead. Um, I think that's a big thing. Obviously, Tapu Lele is potentially a big problem. Um, when it comes to that, and honestly, the Lele has to come. The Lele has to come because it, it deals with my team really, really well. Um, but, you know, unless he's going for like pull of punches with Scizor, which I highly doubt is going to happen, um, we're, we're solid here if we can get the Tailwind up. As long as I get the Tailwind, that is fine. If he doubles into uh, Mandibuzz straight away uh, with an electric type attack and like a fairy type attack, then I am in trouble. But if I see that kind of lead, I'd probably just switch straight out and expect to double in and probably bring on that first time to get on out and uh, I can just work my way from there. So my, my first team, depending on what it is, potentially is going to be uh, Dracovish, Hippowdon, or sorry, Dr Mandibuzz, Dracovish lead and then Hippowdon and then probably Porygon 2 in the back as well to kind of figure out some different things is what my aim would be there. Honestly, uh, this week... As I said, wasn't I wasn't hugely nervous, but now I've gone through it, I am a little bit nervous because there are a couple of mons here that can cause problems. Like, if Mandibuzz goes down, it does cause me a massive amount of problem. But yeah, I think we do have a pretty solid matchup here. The only the, the only issue with this is that, realistically, we are versing Matt Flame next week as well in the uh, quarterfinals. So that is going to be another huge, huge aspect um, of this and I've kind of brought a really good team and I kind of wish I just brought like a trolley team and just kind of dealt with that because uh, I think that would have actually made a potentially a little bit of uh, difference because I think and I think I'm not 100% sure because I don't think the dock is fully updated yet but I think regardless of if I win or lose I am going to be top of my division which is really really weird um, I honestly did not expect kind of to win as much as I have and I'm currently 7-3 I could go 8-3 I could go 7-4 but like you know, that's a really, really cool record to have. So that's definitely something that I am really, really happy about. And I'm going to work um, hard to try and get to the finals this time. I think potentially I have a shot at some point of 
get into the finals, but you know, we'll see, we will see. Uh, currently I'm undefeated in my division, um, but map lane could definitely change that in this battle that's coming up. But yeah, I recommend you go check out the battle, it'll be out tomorrow if you're watching this on day of release, but if not, it should be up. And yeah, that is all for today, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.